As Harayoshi lies, heavily injured in the burning wreckage of a house, he concludes that he was outsmarted because he sought too much power and lacked cunning. But that won't stay the same. He activates a spell and decides to start over again. One more time and this time, he won't fail. As a man checks his son, Seika for his magical powers and elemental affinity, he finds out that he doesn't contain any at all. Harayoshi who's now reborn as Seika says that he doesn't care since his new body contains plenty of spiritual power. Later, he starts summoning various Shikigami and practicing his spiritual power with his new body. He runs into his elder brother Gly who snidely tells him that he's attending the Ladonia University of Magic. Their father walks towards them to take Gly and his elder brother left for magic lessons but Seika asks him if he can practice as well. As they aim to hit a rock with their powers, Luft goes first then Gly who summons fire and mocks Seika for not having any elemental affinity. But Seika takes his wand and summons a fireball larger and stronger than his and obliterates their entire target. A while later, he rescues a female servant, Yifa from Gly who is telling her to come to his room tonight and finds out that she can command elementals, beings that gather around magic so he asks her to team up with him to which she happily agrees. A few days normally pass but suddenly, an elder nude attacks their home while Seika's father is away so he boldly confronts it and easily defeats it with a single attack. Seeing his power, everyone realizes just how strong he is and start applauding him as he inwardly decides that he'll be cunning in this life. After seeing Seika's strength, his father holds a feast at night and says that his exemplary performance has guaranteed him a present so Seika tells him that he wants to go study magic to which his father agrees. He then asks his father to send Yifa with him as well as his servant and although he initially denies, after seeing her grasp over magic he lets her go as well and says that Gly will be attending the army in Seika's place. Infuriated by this, Gly challenges Seika to an official duel the next day so they agree to hold it at noon. Later at night, Luft stops by Seika's room and hands him a glass quill as a gift and asks him to go easy on Gly. At night, Gly comes to discreetly take him out to the courtyard so they begin their duel without any rules to limit them. As Seika calmly stands in place, Gly starts barraging him with all types of spells but he's able to easily ward them off. When he stops, Seika uses his spiritual magic to render him immobile and makes him fall unconscious. The next day, Seika happily leaves the palace with Yifa and bids goodbye to his father and brothers. Later, they head to the academy where an examiner checks their affinities and is surprised to know that Seika doesn't have any. Once she's checked that Yifa has a fire and wind affinity, he sees a red-haired girl named Amu who's got all four affinities walk past him and instantly recognizes her from his past life. Once Seika and Yifa complete their written exam, they head to the practical test where they're supposed to attack large slabs of stone with their powers. Yifa easily burns one up and completely destroys the other while Seika uses three elements from his spiritual power and demolishes all the slabs. A few days later, they get their admission letter and both head to the academy's entrance ceremony where Amu who ranked first out of all the applicants has been chosen as a representative. As they're eating, the hall gets attacked by lesser monsters and the students try to fight back but fail and get heavily injured so Amu fights them alone while Seika uses his Ayakashi to find their leader. Once he does, he confronts it and the monster tells him that he's looking to kill the hero from the famed prophecy before she gets too strong and fights the demon king. Although confused by it, Seika starts fighting it. Although the monster looks to have the upper hand at the start, Seika confuses him by making body doubles and having it tire out slowly before attacking it with his magic and summoning his dragon, Ryu that easily devours it. Once he's done, Yuki asks him if they should just go ahead and kill the demon king now but he tells her that he won't make the same mistake twice. He goes to the hall and sees that Amu who's actually the foretold hero has single-handedly defeated all the monsters, so he decides to make her the strongest even if it means killing the demon king himself. At class, a teacher tells them that the two best students of the class are chosen for going to give the new student roster as an offering to a nearby temple so she chooses Amu and Yifa but Seika tells her that he needs to talk to Amu so she declines and chooses him to go instead of her. They leave the next day and make some small talk before coming across a tree stump with a magic circle and are suddenly teleported to a dungeon where a huge pack of monsters start attacking them. Amu takes the lead and is able to take a lot of them out but gets worn down and faints so Seika lets loose a giant centipede Ayakashi and destroys them all. Later, he makes a barrier around her and she tells him that she's been cursed recently so he has an Ayakashi take the curse temporarily and they share a touching moment as they both tell each other about their pasts. Once they're done, they go to the dungeon boss, Naga and are able to perfectly team up with each other and take it down. Before leaving, Seika takes the dungeon items which contain a mithril sword and a magic ring. 
When they return, he visits their teacher, Mr. Cordell, and deduces that he's the one who's cursed Samuel. Although he acts confused at first, Cordell gives in and says that he's going to have to kill him now, but Seika transfers Amu's curse to himself, then returns it to Cordell, who falls to the ground in instant pain and slowly dies. The next day, Seika gifts the ring to Yifa and greets Amu, but she tells him to not talk to her and thanks Yifa for helping her yesterday as he wonders how the two became friends. A year has passed, as Seika, Yifa, and Amu are eating dinner for their junior's entrance feast. The vice principal tells them to come to the principal's office tomorrow, and when they do the next day, they find that the principal is actually a female dwarf. She says that she wants either him or Yifa to participate with a student named Mabel Crane into the Capitals Art of War tournament. Later as they're discussing it with Amu, she incredulously remarks why they didn't choose her even though she's the student representative and says that the other girl probably got in through connections and won't be able to win but Mabel arrives from behind them and tells Amu that she wasn't chosen because she's weak. Angered by this, Amu challenges her to a small duel and is confident that she'll win but ends up easily losing against Mabel. Later, Seika decides to participate in the tournament to gauge Mabel's strength and both of them depart for the capital with Yifa, who insists she come since she's his servant, and Amu who tags along. When the tournament starts, Seika beats his opponent in less than 10 seconds since he has a headache because of the long journey. Next a rogue-looking participant named Kyle immobilizes his opponent with a look and stabs him through. As Kyle silently walk away, Seika acknowledges that eye-wielders who can hex people with a single look exist in this world as well. In the second round, Seika fights a puppeteer controlling a gigantic golem but instantly defeats her by using his summons. He goes to sit on the stands with Amu and Yifa and sees Mabel fighting against an earth mage. She easily parries all her attacks and makes him concede. As she heads back, Amu tells him that the second hero who defeated the demon king was also named Mabel. At night, he catches a spy collaborating with the demons and finds out that they're trying to kill Mabel since they believe that she's the foretold hero. After killing the spy, he tells his female eye Kashi, Yuki that Mabel has been sent as a fake hero to draw attention away from Amu who's the actual destined hero. The next day, Kyle and a four-element user named Rihanna's face off against each other in the semi-finals and even though Rihanna's tries to hold his own, he still ends up getting defeated by Kyle. After Seika defeats a necromancer easily, he also lands into the semi-finals against Mabel who tells him to withdraw if he doesn't want to get killed. At night, as he's about to go to sleep, Mabel launches a surprise attack on him but he easily holds his own against her and decides that he might not be able to let her go since she's after his blood. Suddenly, a drunkard walks out of an alley and asks what they're doing which divides Seika's attention giving Mabel enough time to get away. He pursues and confronts her before asking her to tell him why she needs to be the one to fight Kyle Ad says that he's already deduced that she's a fake hero. Surprised, she tells him that she was sold so that she can die in the finals which will assure the demons that the hero is dead but she wants to kill Kyle before she dies since he was originally her brother but has had his brain engraved with a powerful magic that strips away all his emotions. Before being operated on, he'd asked her to kill him. Seika gets up and tells her that he'll be the one to defeat Kyle, and after that's done, we'll take her back to the academy. The next day, both of them defiantly face off against each other. As the battle begins Mabel tries her best to defeat him but still loses. Next, Seika faces off against Kyle, and as soon as the battle begins, covers the entire ground with smoke to obscure them. He tries to get Kyle's former self back which works for a bit but suddenly a curse starts spreading across Kyle's body, and as he acknowledges his fate, he tells Seika to ask Mabel to forgive him for the clover. Seika wins the tournament and passes Kyle's final message to Mabel who starts crying and tells him that he had accidentally broken her clover hairpin before his surgery. All of them return to the academy and Seika finds out that the principal had intended this from the start so that Mabel could live a free life. Later, he notices that she's dyed her hair back to their original color as she miserably studies everything she has to catch up to. Seika, Yifa, Amu and Mabel are eating lunch when he tells them that he's going for a dragon hunting expedition in Astelia with Yifa. Suddenly, the Prince of Astelia enters the hall and approaches him when his eyes land on Yifa. He gets down on his knees and asks her to become his wife and a part of his royal harem. His female assistant hurriedly takes them into a room where he briefs Seika on the details of the expedition and says that the Astelian dragon randomly started attacking livestock and is even starting to target people. The next day Yifa and Seika leave for Astelia and she tells him that the prince invited her to sit in his cart but she denied. Confused over whether or not she wants to join the prince's royal harem. They reach the town and later at night, Yifa visits him in his room and tells him that the prince sent an assistant to go bring her to his room. 
He tells her that she doesn't need to go so she asks him if she can sleep in his room to which he agrees. The next day, Seika goes to the prince and tells him that he's going to go inside the mountain to look for the dragon and adds that he will not give him Yifa unless she herself agrees to it. After he leaves alone for the mountain, the prince's female assistant, Rise approaches Yifa and tells her that she's a descendant of elves before saying that she should join the prince's harem and doesn't need to serve Seika all her life. Seika arrives at the dragon's lair and approaches it lying inside. Seeing him, the dragons start attacking but he quickly stops it with one of his summons and traps it under a net. He goes to examine its lair and sees its large golden egg lying there. Seika concludes that the reason it's acting strange is because it can't meet the conditions needed to hatch its egg so he uses his fire element to heat the egg while the dragon peacefully rests beside him. Meanwhile, Rise takes Yifa for a tour of the prince's harem before taking her to a large gallery where a few of the prince's officials are sitting with him. He shows her to them and they immediately complete some paperwork before he announces that she's been officially freed and can now join his harem but she refuses to sign with her thumb so the guards hold her in place by force. Suddenly, Seika arrives on the back of the dragon and grabs Yifa's hand, saying that he needs her to use fire to warm up the egg. When they reach the dragon's lair, they run into the group of mercenaries the prince hired to stop the dragon that are trying to steal the egg but Yifa and Seika team up with their magic and defeat them. They arrive back at the palace and Yifa tells the prince that she doesn't want to join his harem because she loves Seika. Later, Rise talks to her in private and gives her some light spirits that can help her heal wounds. Meanwhile, a band of scary-looking demons kill a boy who tried to fight them as their boss. The devil god decides that he has to kill the hero and complete his mission. As spring break starts, Seika takes Maybell and Amu with him. When they reach his house, he introduces his friends and Gly comes running down to meet him. He tells Seika that the army has been suiting him a lot more than a magic academy, and challenges him to a duel again but he pushes Amu forward who agrees to duel with him. Even though it looks like she'll win, Gly faints a bit and defeats her. Suddenly, a girl in luxurious clothes comes to meet them and Gly introduces her as the Imperial Princess Fiona. They go inside and sit down with her and she praises Amu and Seika, saying that she's had much of them. She asks Seika to accompany her until she returns to the capital, and he happily agrees. As they're eating dinner, Seika's stepmother tells him that he should write to them more often which surprises him since she didn't talk to him much before. The next day he goes to roam the town with Fiona, Gly and Amu and when they enter an area under construction, a long wood beam from the scaffolding accidentally falls on Fiona's head but Gly and Amu stop it before it touches her. As they visit different places, Fiona notices that she stands out a bit because of her clothes so Seika gets a red cloth and ties it around her hair to give off a semi-formal look which she happily examines from a mirror he summoned. Later, Gly tells Seika that there's more to the princess than meets the eye. He tells him that she can see the future, and used it to her full advantage to become the holy princess she now is. As Fiona looks for Seika everywhere, he always uses his Ayakashi to change places and starts to get concerned about why she's taken such an interest in him. He runs into Amu in the field and she tells him to go play chess with her in the gallery since she looks lonely so he agrees. When he reaches the gallery, she proposes that whoever loses has to obey one command from the other to which he reluctantly agrees. As they play, he asks her what her true intentions are so she tells him that she wants to save people, save them from dangers that even they aren't aware of and beats him easily. Meanwhile, the demon party composed of Murderev, Rowan Y, Pyrusralia, Galganes and Zormanum their leader kill all the people they were targeting and get ready for their mission. As Fiona, Seika, Yifa, Amu and Mabel get ready to return to the capital with Gly as the princess guard, they cheerfully bid goodbye to everyone and begin their journey but are targeted by a large group of bandits. At once, Seika gets out and stops the attacks while Gly and his men round up the men. Once they're done they resume their journey again and after reaching the capital, get ready to part ways. Fiona tells them that she had a lot of fun after talking and living with people of the same age during the past few days and tells Seika that she'll always be on his side before leaving. Meanwhile, the demon party gets ready to complete their mission for the devil's future and return home after killing the hero. As the demon party arrives at the capital, they each mark magic circles and teleport inside the city. Once they're inside, they come across a thick, red fog obscuring their vision. Murderev encounters Mabel who challenges him to a duel. As they start fighting both seem to be holding their own and she manages to impress him with her skills, but he outsmarts her and strikes her with his large club but sees that she's disappeared into thin air, leaving a paper Ayakashi behind. All of the demons are able to find each other and all hold up a paper Ayakashi they found in their spots when they suddenly notice Seika sitting in mid-air in front of them. 
he teasingly mocks them a bit before Murderev tries to fight him and steps forward but gets killed with one swipe of Seika's hand. Pyrrhus Raelia and Rowan Y step forward next but get killed as well so Zormanum quickly tells Gaul Gallus to make a run for it and gets killed as well. As Gaul is slowly getting away, Seika swiftly takes him out as well. Later, as Seika is chatting with the others during their junior's entrance ceremony, a group of officers make their way towards Amu and their superior gives the order to restrain her for expected treason. After Amu is taken, Seika goes straight to the principal who tells him to not do anything rash while she tries her best to get things under control. He promises her and leaves. That night, he goes to the grounds and summons Mizuchi, his colossal wyvern and rides on it to the prison where she's being kept. He easily waves aside all the guards and even heavily injures a lot of them in his rage before visiting Amu. He gets her out and attempts to leave when Gly and Fiona block his path. She tells him that the hero is indeed the strongest and destined to defeat the Demon Lord but Amu will not be able to reach that level because of Seika who always protects her and destroyed an entire paladin to rescue her. When he convinces her that he'll make sure she does, she takes them out to a lone path and leads them to a carriage. She says that they should head to the city of Lacacia and live there as she has made all arrangements. He earnestly thanks her and bids her farewell before leaving. As she sees them leave, her shadow asks her who Seika is and she tells her that he's this era's demon king yet still protects everyone close to him because that's just how kind he is, as they're riding away. The two acknowledge that they're going to drop out of school but get excited at the prospect of starting their journeys as adventurers. As they enter Lacacia a few days later, they happily embrace Maybell and Yifa who were already there, waiting for them. 